Performing arts accepted kids from all, all over the city in the disciplines of dance, music, and drama. And I got in for drama, but I was in for the biggest shock of my life. I found I could not compete with middle class kids who had good elementary school educations. I didn't know how to write. I didn't know the difference between a debate and a fight. I didn't know how to think critically. I had been taught to memorize. My grades plummeted, and I wondered how I could have been so smart in the Bronx and so stupid in Manhattan. <laughs> but I struggled barely maintaining a C average, and I was determined to attend college. Because of bad grades, the only way I was going to go to college was if I tried out for schools that accepted you on talent and not grades. I thought I'd follow the current day model of African American boys getting into school on athletic scholarships and not their grades. But there was another hurdle to overcome. Teachers had to recommend you to those schools that had those specialized acting programs and the teachers at the High School of Performing Arts were not going to recommend me. So I got applications on my own, asked my after-school boss to write me a recommendation, and somehow got accepted to Carnegie Mellon University. But once again, I'm weighing over my head. I remember I wrote an essay that I thought was brilliant because it told of my life living in a house ruled by domestic violence, but the girl who wrote about the prom got all the accolades. I complained to the professor, who agreed I probably had the more profound essay, but she could barely read it because I could not organize, identify a paragraph or spell. It happens to a lot of us, Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor, the other Sonia from the Bronx, She was a top student at a very rigorous Catholic high school in the Bronx, but even she had to hone up on her writing skills when she got accepted to Princeton University. So I took every remedial course offered me, and there were many, because the United States was an idealistic country then. The Civil Rights Movement was in full swing. The Peace Corps was up and running. President Johnson wanted to create the great society. Women wanted to join the workforce for the first time and would burn their bras in protest. I guess now we'd have to burn our spanxes. <laughs> Except they do not burn. I know this because I tried to dry a pair in a hotel room with a hair dryer. Ladies, don't try it. So I continued to get help in courses I needed, and then I was lucky enough to get into a school production of a show called Godspell. The show came to New York, me with it, it was a big hit. And then I got the call to audition for Sesame Street. It certainly wasn't what I started out to do. I got hooked when I realized Sesame Street was more than about teaching the alphabet and counting. It was attempting to change society on a preschool level. I got caught up in the mission of closing the education gap and eliminating racism. And before I knew it, 44 years had gone by. It was wonderful, but entertaining and educating children had not been on my agenda. And that is the crux of it and the theme of these remarks. Stay flexible enough to maneuver when things don't go the way you expect them to.